Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ash Hansen and today we are taking a look at Alpaca. Alpaca.markets is the domain name. This is a API that allows you to build a trading bot basically or, or trade programmatically, you know, if, if you wanted to, I don't know, buy the S&P at 8.45 a.m. every day. Uh, you can do stuff like that. But what I'm going to be trying to do with this is build a profitable trading bot. And so over the, the series of these videos, we will look at, at how I'm going about that, starting with today, which is really just an introduction to Alpaca. I've never used it before, wanted to give it a try. Turns out I really like it. So that's the this is the, the one I'm going to be sticking with. What we are looking at here is the Alpaca dashboard. You can see I am strictly on paper trading right now. I'm not going to put real money into this until I'm confident that I've built something that might actually make sense. But yeah, no trades as of, uh, I guess, maybe 15, 20 minutes ago when I started running the bot. But we'll talk about the bot and then hopefully uh, at some point in this video, a trade will happen and I can come back here and, and sort of show you it. So first thing we, we should probably talk about is how this bot is working today. It's not super complex. It's just using moving averages. And I sort of jotted out here what a moving average is. So if you had, let's say over, you know, maybe it's a, over a month or something, you had an asset that's priced $10, then $15, then $20. You sum all those up, you get 45. That's over three price periods. So you divide it by three, you get 15. That would be a moving average, right? It's taken the last prices of whatever sort of window you have. And then it's divided by how many prices you have and giving you the moving average. So in, in our case, we're going the Bitcoin price over the last 20 minutes is the, the short window, the faster moving average. And then the slower moving average is going to be over the last 50 minutes. And so Alpaca supports getting the Bit Bitcoin price every minute, which means that, yeah, over 50 minutes, we're going to have an average price. Over 20, we're going to have an average price. You can actually see those being jotted out down here every minute or so. Um, so the last time the short moving average or the, the price of Bitcoin over the last 20 minutes was $69,319.26. And then over the last 50 minutes, the average price has been 69, 323 and 14 cents. So let me delete that just so I don't save it and break it and then have to figure out what I've done wrong. And we'll take a look at the rest of this script. So we import a lot of stuff from Alpaca. These are the API keys. It's in this config file generally best practice not to put your API keys uh, like on GitHub or anything like that. So I, I just keep mine in a config file that I usually keep locally. We start out saying, hey, it's sold. That's That doesn't really matter. You could put it as non. It's just what I ended up with. And then we tell it the, the symbol that we're working with. I found, and, and this is a shortcoming of mine. I haven't actually looked into Alpaca that deeply yet, but sometimes it wants me to do the symbol with a slash in it. Sometimes it hates that. So I've got both here and I've just plugged it in where it makes sense with or without the slash. We're trading 0.1 Bitcoin when a trade actually does occur and uh, we are paper trading. So this sets up the trade client. The trade client is what's actually gonna execute the trades. And realistically, you could just you know throw in, hey, I wanna trade uh, S&P right now and hit enter and that's it, it's done. But this is obviously streaming and there's a lot more going on. But yeah, it's, it's really cool. Alpaca is really cool. So <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, Here's where we buy Bitcoin. Here's where we close out Bitcoin. Uh, the reason that I have it in two ways rather than just a buy and sell is that when we actually do buy Bitcoin, which looks like it might be very close, we buy it if the short crosses the long. But when we actually buy Bitcoin and we're saying we want to buy 0.1 Bitcoins, we actually end up buying a little bit less than 0.1. And that's because of the fees. I have this tab open because I was a little bit confused earlier with the fees. They say, while well, Alpaca remains commission free, which I was thinking, hey, I buy 0.1, I get 0.1. No, actually, we, we get fees. Uh, <laughs> so you don't actually get a whole Bitcoin every time. The fees are, I still haven't figured that out, but um, maybe, maybe in time I will figure it out. Anyway, there are fees. So that's why I have a buy Bitcoin, which is buying 0.1 and then a close Bitcoin. This just goes and it closes out the entire position. So it says, hey, do I have Bitcoin? You know, close it. Uh, you do see there that we just bought Bitcoin. The uh, short moving average crossed over ever so slightly. Look, 75 cents versus 53 cents. It crossed over. So we bought Bitcoin and we should see that reflected over here. There we go. Don't need to refresh, Alpaca does it for you. 
We'll see it reflected over here now where uh, we have, like I was just saying, less than 0.1 Bitcoins, uh, market value of $6,914, already down 0.42%, which is largely those fees that I just mentioned. Those fees as well come out on the, on the opposite side. So yeah, that's why this particular trading algorithm will not work. But let's carry on going through it. So we got the buy, we've got the sell. We then have the crypto stream, which is streaming these uh, individual uh, closes and opens back through here. So that's uh, where you see every, every minute we get a new one pop up. That is called a crypto data stream. You give it the same keys right here to make it so that I didn't have to wait around uh, at the start. You know, turn this on. You don't have to wait 50 minutes for all the data to come in. You can actually precede it with, hey, get me the last 50 minutes of data. So we go ahead and we get the last 50 or so minutes of data and that's deprecated. I need to clean that up, but we get the last 50 minutes of data and pre-populate uh, everything so that when we start, we're already got two moving averages. We don't have to wait 50 minutes for them. And then this is where I guess all the magic happens. So we get the close prices, which is uh, from here. We got open, high, low, close. So we grab the close price right there and we insert it into our array of closed prices that array looks a lot like this so we take the array and this is where we're doing all our math on it right we've, we've now got an array of all these different closed prices we take the last 20 and do one average we take last 50 and do the other but here is where we append it to the array we then go ahead and get those moving averages uh so this is just checking that we have enough data there to do the moving averages and if not don't crash but you know carry on carry on getting en enough data once we have enough data, assuming that both of those are not equal to none, we can then check, is the short moving average greater than the long? If it is, buy the, the stock, buy the crypto. We then also set the current signal to buy. This is just keeping track of whether we are in a buy state or a sell state. And then the opposite, if it's selling, if, if um, the short moving average is less than the long, then we should be in a sell state and we should close out our Bitcoin position if we already have one open. And that is it. You see here as well that Crypto Stream does run asynchronously, so we can run this forever, assuming my computer doesn't go to sleep. And we can just sort of let it run and let it run and let it run and see what happens in the end. So I'm going to probably try and leave this running for a few hours and see what actually happens on on a, uh, a, a 20, 50 minute sort of moving average for Bitcoin. See if I don't think it'll be able to overcome the fees, but there's no harm in letting it sit there on a paper traded in account and, and just see what happens. Um, so I will report back probably on a, a YouTube short after this has run for a couple of hours just to let you know how it does. But yeah, if you're interested in, in more videos like this where we take a look at trying to build an actual profitable trading bot for likely crypto, because crypto is open at all hours, then do subscribe to the channel. Uh, I would love to have you along. If you've got any suggestions for what you would like to see, what you'd like me to try out or build with, with this particular tool set, then let me know as well in the comments. I'd, I'd love to give it a try and, and sort of see if, if your particular trading strategy works out. But yeah, thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Have a good one.